Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers and uh, I am the Carb Addiction Doc and today I'm going to talk about a topic that I am very conflicted about and that is exercise and physical activity. So one of my standard sayings is this, that exercise, physical activity is 100% unnecessary, 100% unnecessary for weight loss or metabolic correction. And I stand by that. It is not necessary for, for uh, uh, weight loss. Diet and exercise. You must exercise. You've got to burn off the calories. Bullshit. Nobody smokes three cigarettes and goes for a run to breathe out the nicotine. But what we do, because we think of obesity in terms of calories, not the dysfunction from carbohydrates, which are toxic at entry to the system. That's why you can't burn off nicotine or alcohol by going for a run. It's toxic when it enters the system. So are carbohydrates. So why am I even doing this video? Because there is enormous value to physical activity and exercise. It is just not in the realm of burning off calories. Disconnect from that. Hell, oh, you must burn off calories. I calculated my calories and I, I went for a run this far, therefore I can eat. Your body doesn't work that way. Your body doesn't work that way. Your body does not work that way. Anybody that tells you that you need to exercise to burn off calories is FOS. And you can figure that one out. So what are the values of physical activity? And I espouse it. I, I, I work toward it. I like it for myself. Well, here's the first thing. Not all people are wired the same. Some people, like myself, even though I'm terrible at it, have physical activity as a foundational element of what we do for fun and pleasure. It's a restorative thing for our emotional well-being. Plenty of other people are creative or spiritual or human connected in terms of what gives them greatest emotional buoyancy. So I'm not going to demonize somebody who prefers to play the trumpet rather than go for a walk. Knock yourself out at the same time. So I'm not going to take somebody who's a thespian and try to make them into a gym rat. At the same time, I'm not going to take some gym rat person and try to get them to paint pictures. If they love to do it, if they want to explore it, absolutely fine. But you don't have to. As long as we've got one of those categories, the primary role for me of physical activity is for its mental well-being. And for me, the, one of the greatest benefits, especially if there's a lot of emotional tension, is my isolation, to be alone, to be by myself. I love my wife, I love my son, but they both know that I need my time. I need that walk at 5.30 in the morning when they're still asleep. I need that for emotional restitution, for mental well-being. So physical activity is a very powerful endorphin activator. It's a wonderful tool to use for a healthy emotion management system as part of what you do. You don't have to have a dominant. You don't have to go and go to the gym for an hour a day. You don't have to run five miles every day. Physical activity is excellent for emotional restitution, but there are other benefits. The largest user of energy in the human body is your muscles. Your muscles are the largest repository for glycogen, and they are the largest users of energy in the human body for most humans. So one of the critical things about healthy human function is what we call ebb and flow. The entire human body works on a homeostatic negative feedback principle. So there are periods of time twice a day where the human body is anabolic. It's in growth mode. And then for a large part of the between times, equal and opposite, it's in utilization or catabolic mode. So early in the morning or, or whenever you break your fast, at the time of a meal, insulin goes up, human growth hormone goes up, thyroid hormone gets released. Those are your catabolic hormones where you're storing food and you are replenishing substrate. You're providing cholesterol, you're providing building blocks, protein, amino acids, uh, saturated fats for your tissues to repair themselves. You're producing protein, you're producing enzymes, you are in production mode, you're building your cells. And then between meals, your insulin, your human growth hormone, and your uh, um, T3 levels go down and your glucagon levels your 
cortisol levels, your somatomedin levels go up. Those are your catabolics. Glucagon says, hey, fat cells, break yourself down. Hey, autophagy, uh, uh, dying cells or struggling cells, break yourselves down. Hey, liver, produce ketones. Hey, liver, produce sugar. Um, we go into a state of return of body breakdown so we can rebuild. Okay, we work during the day, at night the janitorial services come in and clean stuff up. That's the ebb and flow. And by being physically active on a regular basis, we burn off that stored energy. I hate that concept in terms of calories, but we reduce the glycogen stores. So we use those up between meals and we should never eat because we exercised. We create that diurnal variation, but physical activity is part of the catabolic side of things. It uses up that stored energy and then we replenish it with fresh energy. So it gives us a place to put our glucose that we eat, gives us a place to put our fat and our protein. And actually the glucose shouldn't be eaten. It should come from protein being converted to sugar, but it gives us a repository. But if our muscles aren't using that, then where the hell is the stuff supposed to go? Now, the liver between uh, uh, at mealtimes produces sugar from protein, produces ketones, produce, and it sends it out to the muscles. The muscles say, dude, I'm full. Stores are full. Doors closed. So what does it do? It comes back to the liver, has to be converted to fat, gets into the fat stores, and disrupts the whole environment. You get fatter, which is fine a little bit, but you want to use the muscles to generate as the primary factor to create a demand for energy for repair tissues so that you've got a place for that stuff you're producing during the catabolic state to be used and to be stored. So it's the largest user of energy and energy substrates, but only if you use it up. Exercise. It is a very powerful anabolic trigger. It triggers the human body to repair itself, to get healthier and to get better. The muscles generate lactate. Lactate is an energy containing byproduct of glucose metabolism, but lactate is in and of itself a useful fuel, but lactate can also be used as a building block by certain cells. So the heart uses a lot of lactate. The brain uses a significant amount of lactate. Lactate also modifies the blood's pH. It's an acid, lactic acid. So it lowers the blood's pH. If the pH gets too high or too low, that affects sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. And we are very pH restricted. So the human body uses lactate as a way to pH balance the blood. And, that, and also to transport energy around the blood. We often forget about lactate. Lactate is crucial in the right amount and lactate gets generated by the muscles when they're exercising. And lactate is crucial to healthy human function, brain function, heart function for fuel, for, for repair, but also for blood pH monitoring. If you're not doing that, if you're not generating that lactate from exercise, yes, you generate a few other uh, lactate from a few other places, you may have some minor pH aberrations in the blood, which makes you less healthy. And lactate is crucial for brain fuel. The next thing that happens when the muscles are using up a lot of that sugar, the muscles are using up the sugar, that leaves a sugar deficit in the body and the liver produces ketones between meals. And those ketones are vital as building blocks and as energy substrate for things like the brain. So exercise has a huge brain refueling, brain substrate modification. If all that's available to you is excess ex uh, sugar that, the, brain, that the, the muscles are not taking up, the brain suffers because of it. And here's the other interesting thing, is that if the brain is only using sugar, if the brain is, use, is only seeing and only using sugar and is not seeing ketones, you start to develop brain tissue loss, you start to develop cognitive impairment and you start to develop aging of the brain. So what's interesting is one of the most powerful anti-aging things you can do is physical activity. We know that mobility, mobility is flexibility, balance, endurance, and strength. Mobility, those four components are the top top, top, top criteria related to healthy longevity. But not just because of the muscles. 
when the muscles use up energy, when the muscles trigger that anabolic effect, it's restorative to the brain. So physical activity is one of the best anti-aging things you can do. Accelerates the heart rate, accelerates the blood flow, accelerates the oxygen capacity. But even something mild like practicing balance or flexibility has huge anti-aging value. And if you think about this, most people are pretty physically active just as part of their day, if not exercising, when they're kids, when they're teenagers, when they're young adults. But once we get into our 40s and our 50s, now our joints are hurting and we become more and more more sedentary. Our world, our physically active world, typically becomes smaller and smaller and smaller for most of us. And that creates accelerated aging. So aging is not a function of time and age. It is a function of senescence. It is a function of non-cycling of our metabolic state. And physical activity is a cornerstone of that. And when you're getting up to my age, that becomes very important. Ask yourself, when last do you actually run? Not go for a run. When last did you run? When last did you sit flat with your butt on the ground and stand up? When last did you jump? When last did you look up and stretch? When last did you squat? When last did you move? And if you're older than 50, uh, uh, Yeah, that's your memory fade. You can't even remember when you did it because you didn't do it for a long time and your brain doesn't even remember because your brain's starting to fade. Hmm. Sedentary lifestyle promotes early death. And we decrease exercise when we're in our 40s and 50s. Folks, Physical activity is not necessary for life, but it sure makes life a hell of a lot better. And notice I use the word physical activity, not exercise, because so many people are petrified of exercise. But when we become fatter and sicker, we're unable to do that. We're unable to do that. Don't shut down physical activity because your ankle's sore. Cut the rest of your body. What can I do with my arms? What can I do with my legs? Please, please, please try to make physical activity a part of your mental, your cardiovascular, your musculoskeletal, and your cerebral health. It is a cornerstone of what we do as human beings. I am the carb addiction doc. If you want to get better, be busy. This is not exercise. (laughs) This is not exercise. Okay? If you want to visit, if you want to consult, give us a shout. 561-517-0642. Text us, WhatsApp us, call us. I know I'm very, very busy. I'm booking far, far in advance. I'm one human being. But come and see us. Even if you're well into this journey, set up a visit and it'll resonate with you most likely. When your time comes for the visit, not not for the grave. (laughs) I am the Carbon Diction Doc. I will talk to you guys next time. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment.